some other stories today. Bill Elliott is not here. His dad passed away early Friday. Matt Kenseth will be subbing while George Elliott's funeral is held today at 2 o'clock Eastern time in Georgia. Where Derek Cope finally finds a home on the racetrack. There's Matt Kenseth in the 94. Again, filling in for Bill Elliott. If you're just joining us and didn't hear, Bill's dad passed away earlier in the week. Now makes the move for 12th the way he grabs it from Derek Cope. Jeremy went in so very hard that he swept up the racetrack. By the way, Jeremy Mayfield is fifth quickest at the happy hour yesterday, the last practice, so he has a good car. As you see, he's wor working his way towards the front. Matt Kenseth's doing a great job in the 94 for Bill Elliott. Yeah, let's point out this is his first time ever in a competitive Winston Cup race, and he won here yesterday in the Bush Series event, and what a terrific job he's done. How different, buddy, driving his normal light post dot com bush series car versus this mcdonald's ford today in winston cup well the biggest thing he has now is about 100 more horsepower than he's used to dealing with but as you can see he's really taking care of everything he's getting in the throttle very easy the biggest thing is jumping back in the throttle and breaking the rear wheel loose which he is not doing he's doing a great job as far as holding that car where it needs to be on the racetrack Jimmy mayfield started 28th there he is he's now in 13th spot and look with him there. You see Matt Kenseth right now going on the inside, taking that spot away from the 12 of Jeremy Mayfield. Well, if you wonder what Jack Roush sees in that guy, just watch these laps, and you're going to see exactly what Jack Roush sees, and it's an awful lot of talent. A ton of talent for Jeremy Mayfield. Another guy who has some great talent is the 99 machine. There's the 94 of Matt Kenseth. The great set in the corner. Then back in the throttle, he never overdrives on this type of racetrack. The one thing I will tell everybody, don't get excited about that piece of paper that was on the front of that six car. I think it's small enough that it will not create a heating problem for Mark Martin. But it is there, and let me tell you, when you take these noses off to get the proper downforce, you don't need any extra thing on the front of the race car. Good point. Behind, look at Kenseth. See Matt Kenseth right there? Third guy in the screen, the number 94. That's for the battle for position on the lead lap. He's running an eighth right now. Boy, he's making a statement out of the Bush Grand National Circuit up right now. Really, I mean, these are great drivers that this guy is running against, taking the outside line there, moving up the racetrack on Bobby Labonte, getting great forward bite in Bill Elliott's car there in 94. I'm just really impressed with Matt Kenseth. As you said, Jack Ralph saw something in this driver. He gives him a lot of technical advice uh, as far as his Bush Grand National deal with Robbie Riser and all the guys. And I tell you, you better remember that name. One of these days we'll be talking about him chasing Jeff Gordon and these guys for the win. And as we watch this run, let's remember that this is his first time in a Winston Cup car, and it's also his first time with his crew. They say it takes a long while for a driver and a crew to get used to each other. Well, Kenseth is really doing a job here today to be running as well as he is. And I don't know if it's a comfort factor or not, buddy, you can tell me, but Bobby Labonte's ahead of him. Well, Bobby was in the Bush race yesterday. They're going by Jeff Burton. He's run against Jeff Burton in Bush Series races. Also in the top ten, Dale Jarrett, who was in the Bush race, albeit somewhat briefly yesterday because of an accident. But, I mean, he's run against these guys on this racetrack. Not all of them, certainly. Does he have any comfort level, anything like that, helping him today? To a 16 and pass a little bit there. Because that <laughs> chest has to be getting bigger, and he's feeling better about what Matt Kenton brings to the table now. He's answered the question, yes, I can run with Bobby Labonte. He's in my rearview mirror right now. Weston Cup, the premier uh, NASCAR event, and he's up there running with the best. Doing a heck of a job. Steve, what's the deal down there at Kyle's pit? Levi, Bobby Kennedy, just talking to Kyle. Bobby, we were just saying what a great run you were having. What happened? I don't know. He said it just went running. Uh, thank my brother. He didn't give any warning at all. He said I'll go. Just finished the day. Ah, that's too bad. Kyle doing so very well. And all of a sudden, it's up in smoke. So now only 11 teams remain on the lead lap. Kyle was one of the lucky dozen that have not been disposed of by Mark Martin. And now with all of the pit stops, good run for Matt Kenseth, among others. He's in seventh. Let's go to the pits. And he lied. Joe Caroni's here, the crew chief. Now, Matt Kenseth had been talking about a bad vibration before this most recent pit stop. Joe? We heard, we heard Matt talking about a bad vibration. What can you tell us? Well, 
it, it sounds like we have a broke valve spring or something. At first, he could hear it and his, not really feel it, so we thought maybe a pipe broke, so we looked on this pit stop to see if the pipe is broken. It doesn't look like a pipe's broken. We're just going to have to wait and see here. All right, let's go down pit road to Matt. I think they knew. Me too. It really was. It's, I think we estimated we had about 20,000 people out there watching that show last night. It so certainly it was, looked like it. It was a lot of fun. Great crowd, too. Uh, 20,000, it sounded like about 50,000. There you see Matt Kenseth coming back in again. Tracy, I know you're tied in with uh, TNN Outdoors yes, as a, as a sure promotional am. spokesperson. And, uh, you know, it's a natural. you got NASCAR, you got the, the country sound, you got the outdoor life. It all kind of goes hand in hand. It sure does. I mean, I, I told that crowd that last night. I said, y'all are NASCAR fans. And I asked them if they love to hunt and fish. And now everybody in the whole crowd screamed and raised their hands. And uh, I said, well, that's my kind of people right there. And it is. It's. I think you see that correlation, uh, and you know, it, not in many sports. Steve Burns, it's, it's a remarkable story. Uh, he won and sold very well. Eli, I've never seen anything like it. None of the guys on the team seem to know what's wrong. They raised the hood twice on that last caution period. They said crew chief Joe Garoni hit a wire that might have been loose. I don't know if that was enough to fix the problem, but it really is all in the mail now. It really is, no doubt about it. Solid run. One of only nine teams currently, or rather ten teams currently on the lead lap. There you see the first plus financial race summary. Average speed, 123.071. The record for the 400s here, 132 and change. The rules are so restrictive and so tight, and NASCAR releases these cars to try to keep them even, but look what's happening. There's going to be a good scramble right here, but they're also closing in just a bit more on Mark Mark. Everybody's closing in just a tick. Makes you wonder if he just, he says, I have a great base car, why I've used it. I made the set a good pace out here, and if they start getting too close, I'll pick up the pace. 129 miles remaining. Still lots of racing here at the Monster Mile. Mike Beam and the whole McDonald's team cheering their man on. Maybe he'd gone to the garage at that time. And now Jeff Burton brings out caution for the fifth time. Now, as I said, 108, 107 miles from the finish. Hmm. Fuel. Fuel. <laughs> <laughs> and you just said you in the broadcast not long ago, Dick Bergeron said, Mark Martin gets great gas mileage. Well, we'll see. Now, Jeff Gordon, last time when he did not have that great gas mileage, they had the wick turned up on the motor. Ray Evernham has taken a more moderate position this time. They don't have it turned up quite as much, so he should get better fuel mileage. Will it be enough? Now, here they come down pit road. It'll be lap 294, 106 miles to conclusion. the top runners are in. Nobody is staying out, obviously. Kenseth will be the first one to stop. Steve? And Matt Kenseth comes to a stop. Joe Garoni said he did not think they would make any chassis adjustments to the 94. Right side tires going on. They do make a chassis adjustment on the right side. Shifting weight to the left. Now the left side tires coming off. Four tires for Matt Kenseth. Let's check in now with Glenn Jarrett. Okay, Mark Martin is in down here, guys, and this will be four tires and fuel. Fuel being the key word here. I asked Jack Roush if they can make it all the way. He did not give me an answer. Mark Martin, Bobby Labonte, and Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett are the guys to make it out first. I'm going to tell you what I would do. If there was any doubt whatsoever in my mind that I couldn't make it, there's only nine cars on the lead lap, right before we go back to green, I'd have to come in and top off. Good strategy right there. And there you see how they came off the pit lane today. There's Kenseth and Gordon. They have again put Ernie Irvin a lap down in 11. The green car there, that's Bobby Labonte now running in second spot due to a great pit stop. They got him right back out there. Matt Kenseth and, and uh, Jeff Gordon, though, are closing in on him in a hurry. Quick lap last time by was Jeff Gordon's lap. Kenseth second fastest last time with Mark Martin third. 
Ernie Urban in that 36 was one of the few guys that tried practice up and down on the racetrack. Most of the guys were just trying to stay as low as possible, but he tosses that car into the corner so hard that he had no choice but to find out what was going on upstairs. And here comes Gordon on the inside of Kenseth. He's got third, so Gordon grabs the spot. Let's see if Kenseth can cover it. He does before Rusty Wallace sneaks on through. Urban and his team thought they were going to have a big day today. Kenseth goes up the racetrack. Rusty Wallace takes the spot away. Right now, Kenseth's car does not seem to be turning as well as it was just before the pit stop. Notice they're having problems on the left rear, and in fact, they had a lug nut that got stuck in the air gun as they were removing the lug nut, so that's what slowed them down. They finally got it off and then got the replacement tire back on, but it was a lug nut that got caught up in the air gun. So that's the update there. Matt Kenseth running in the eighth spot. Ward Burton's car had stopped on the racetrack, and they have pushed it around to the pit area. In fact, the fifth. Matt Kenseth is six. That's a pretty good scramble there. Mayfield trying to grab third place away. And look at that move by Kenseth. He and Rusty Wallace scrambling for fifth. He, he wants that position very bad as you see him coming off turn two. He pulls up beside Rusty. Rusty kind of comes over and says, it isn't going to be easy if you get by me, but hey, I'll tell you what, Matt Kenseth, no matter where he finishes, he should be proud of a great run today. This car's dancing just a little bit here down the final stages. Tires, but he knew uh, wear down just a bit. You see, Kenseth has a little more steam right in the center part of the corner. If he can get under Rusty and pull even with him, I think he has a muster to get him. Look at this. Mayfield got by Bobby Labonte. That was for fourth spot that they had. Grabs third now, does Mayfield. Right behind him, Kenseth. Did he hang on? Rusty Wallace. Right here is very strong, but he's on the low side and can't get a great run up. Rusty will pull back beside of him, side by side, down the back of the way. Ten miles to go. Here comes Kenseth again. He's not going <laughs> to give up either. What a great show. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy, I tell you what, that's two great drivers right there. When I say that, Kenseth has proved how well he can drive today. Can you imagine how good this Kenseth kid is going to be when he gets some experience? Oh, boy. Uh, what that did, though, that brought Dale Jarrett right up on the back of Kenseth now. From first place, Mark, to second place, Gordon is still a second. Then it is nine seconds further back to these guys right here. They're a total of ten seconds back of the race leader. No chance they have to catch Mark Martin. Right now, they're just roaring about each other. Well, there's only eight laps to go, but I tell you what, Kendall's going to give it another try, and he's even going to try it on the outside of Rusty Wallace. <laughs> wow. Whoa, baby. Oh, I don't think so. Didn't force the issue. No. One thing is smart. Another to be fast. If you're both, it's twice as good. Well, Matt Kenseth, your first Winston Cup start. Congratulations, an outstanding effort, sixth place. Yeah, we ran pretty good. Um, the McDonald's Ford, you know, handled really good all day. Um, I probably didn't call for quite the rest, right adjustments there. Uh, in the middle of the race, when I was running second to Mark, you know, we were running the same lap times, were just a little tight. So uh, I wanted to free it up. We got a little too loose, and then we came back to being pretty good again. But some guys at the end of the race step on the gas. You know, in the middle of the race, I think he was just leaving me where he wanted me. And, uh, you know, everybody made the right adjustments at the end. They have a lot more experience in long races. And, uh, kind of took off and left me, but um, I'm glad we got a, a good run for the Bill Elliott number 94 car, and I uh, hope they're doing all right at home. Well, congratulations. Eli? Classy young driver with one whale of a future ahead of him. 